Jets up to the 30, the 20, 10, 5, Torrey Horton back to the end zone. Oh. 40-yard play, guess who? Body up the middle, making another move to the outside. 15, 10, end zone again. Nice move by Brown. He's got space. He's got six. 35-yard touchdown for Byron Brown, a record-setting night for the South Florida quarterback. Third down so far, a little bit of a high snap. Jensi right up the middle. Jensi has room. Ashton Jensi, give him six. Second and low. Lagarde tries to beat it. The G5 Hive. All G5, all the time. Welcome to the G5 Hive Live, and we are excited to bring you another G5 college football coverage week that you love each and every week. I butchered that. It's been a long day. It has been a week for this Monday, but I am Luke. I am joined by my co-host, Justice. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're watching us on X, please give us a follow, a like, a retweet. And if you're listening to us in podcast form, please rate and review. Uh, moving on to our G5 Hive Week 3 Waiver Wire, honey. And we're going to get started with our quarterbacks. Uh, over to you, Luke. All right. So this week I've got quarterbacks. Uh now, when I'm looking at them, and I'm looking at, again, we're trying to look at guys who are 30% owned in leagues and in fan tracks or less. Obviously, these are not in any particular order, but, you know, Caden Veltkamp is the, the guy that we got to kind of be looking at right now. He's averaging 21 and a half points per game. He is 10% rostered, just came off of his 27 for 30 performance for 398 yards and five touchdowns. A lot of these, other than Felt Camp, a lot of these guys are going to be in that um, twenty points per game, with the exception of a, you know one guy that I'll, I'll mention a little bit later. But then we got Mikey Keen. He's twenty four percent owned. He's averaging seventeen point three points per game. The thing that I like about Fresno State is they have thirteen touchdowns. Obviously, you score touchdowns, you score points, they score fantasy points. That is thirty ninth in the nation. We've got Christian Veyer. He's 1% owned. He's on a bye this week. Then they have a game and then another bye, but he's averaging 20 points per game. So maybe you want to wait a little bit, but that he's a guy that, you know, you should maybe watch out for. Like I mentioned, uh, then we've got uh, Brendan Lewis, 20% owned. He's scoring 18.4 points per game. They've had 12 red zone attempts so far this year. Um, four of them coming, um, four of their touchdowns have come from the rushing side. Five have come from the passing. Those 12 red zone attempts are 43rd in the nation, which I mean, not too, not too shabby there for Nevada. So, you know, depending if they decide to go more pass happy, I mean, this is probably happy medium there. So that 18.4, probably a pretty good number there for Brendan Lewis. Um, and then, uh, another guy, um, Let's see. I don't have written down here. Um, give me a second. We'll get back to we'll get back to to him. Um, can we go to the next slide? Give me a minute while I look at my notes. I apologize, guys, because I had a crazy, crazy evening with the kiddos. Um, then we've got. Um, Ethan, um, right, Ethan Vasco there for Coastal Carolina, um, 25% owned, 35th in red zone appearances. He's scoring 19.2. They're scoring 15 touchdowns with his 21st in the nation. Um, so that is uh, pretty good there. Tucker Gleason is a guy that I really want to make sure that we know about. 23.8 points per game. He's one of the few that are over that 20 points per game threshold. Um, 21% owned. Um, they are scoring um, in the uh, 17 touchdowns, 14th in the nation. So they're, you know, obviously, again, scoring touchdowns, getting you points. 17 red zone with 
appearances with six rushing and seven passing. Um, and then you've got Skylar Locklear. He's 2% owned, scoring you about 20 points per game, getting you roughly two points every week just rushing. So that negates an interception or fumble, whatever. So he's giving you a little bit there with his legs, which is important because um, pretty much <clears throat> um, him and uh, Jackson there in the backfield. Then we've got Mensa, 10% owned, scoring you 16.1 points per game. Once a conference play comes in, um, I think Mensa will be a great player to add. And then Emmett Brown, 4% owned, talked about him in the 2020 group, 23.1 points per game. They um, have nine red zone um, appearances, one rushing, five passing. Um, so you you like that. Red zone attempts, again, with looking at Locklear and uh, Vayer, they are the lowest. Um, UTEMP with eight red zone appearances and Georgia State with nine. So obviously those aren't great. So I'd have them at the lower lo- level of my, you know, ad- adding. But now if we go back to the previous slide and we have uh, Jacksonville State quarterback Tyler Huff comes in in week one against Coastal Carolina and since taking over, he played at Louisville, scored you 26 and a half points. And then um, last week against Eastern Michigan, scored 28.44 points. And what really sticks out to, to me is in those two games that he started, he had 18 rush attempts. Again, not with sacks. The following game, he had 14. He had 101 on the ground and one touchdown um, in his first start. And then 80 yards and no touchdowns in the second. So getting you a lot there on the rushing, something to keep in mind when you're looking for a quarterback. Like I said, a lot of these guys, not in any particular order, are scoring you right around that 20 points. Really want to look at um, Tyler Huff is a good option. Felt Camp, um, Thayer is is a potential guy. Tucker Gleason, and then if you need somebody with some legs, um, Skylar Locklear, and then Emmett Brown. And honestly, if there's anybody in that 2020 slides and they're on your waivers, they're a good option too because they're getting you the opportunities and uh, the yardage. All right, uh, let's move over to the running backs. Um, So the first one I want to mention, you know, running backs are thin um, in in any kind of fantasy format, and and the G5 is no different. Uh, So we talked about Braden Sloan and our 2020 guys. Like he should absolutely not be – uh, be under 30% owned. And he's he's just under the threshold at uh, 29%. Um, he's heavily involved in this offense. He, as Luke mentioned in, in the 2020 segment, um, he is leading uh, the G5 in terms of uh, receptions per game. Um, and he's also the lead running back carrying the ball. So, you know, this he should be a priority add. Um, you know, coming up, Mac, Mac, uh, Mac conference play coming up. Braden Sloan uh, needs to be on your roster. He's someone that's gonna that's gonna win you some games um, here in the coming weeks. So hopefully we're not talking about Braden Sloan um, next week. Um, another, I think, guy that's a priority add um, is Billy Lucas at Liberty. Um, as we mentioned, uh, uh, currently Billy Lucas is only six percent owned. Quentin Cooley had that injury. It, it does not look good. Um, according to, to Jamie Chadwell there. And if, um, you know, Quentin Cooley goes down, Billy Lucas is the man. And, and he's going to kind of see that workload that Quentin Cooley saw last season when Quentin Cooley was the only guy that was uh, was healthy for Liberty. Um, and so, you know, it, 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 you need to hedge those bets. And if you're not doing it, one of your co-owners is, they're going to be adding, they're going to be pretty high on Billy Lucas just because, he has potential workhorse uh, written all over him if Quentin Cooley is out for the season or an extended period of time. Um, next up, running back Javon Jackson, UTEP. We've talked about him, I feel like, every week on this show. Um, he's only 24% owned. Um, he's not necessarily like, you know, he's not the, the, the sexy ad that Braden Sloan or Billy Lucas is, but he, he is a workhorse back um, for UTEP there. UTEP's not very good, but but uh, Javon Jackson is the one um, kind of carrying the load in terms of running backs for UTEP. 
Um, this next guy uh, we talked about earlier uh, when we did our news and notes and the injuries, that's Christian Washington. It's probably just a short-term play, right? Um, Coastal Carolina uh, rotates their backs. Christian Washington is 6% owned, um, but it's a good play right now. And until they get Braden Bennett and Javon Simpkins back from injury, uh, Christian Watson is the one um, carrying that workload for the Chanticleers. So, again, not a probably not a great long-term ad, uh, but if you need somebody this week, um, he, he could uh, he could do well for you, assuming both Bennett and Simpkins are still out. And uh, rounding out this group is uh, Rahaj, Rajai Harris uh, from East Carolina, 13% owned. And this has been back-to-back weeks where he's kind of been a workhorse back for East Carolina. Um, we'll see if that continues against um, uh, App State this week. But uh, Rajai Ra- Rajay Harris, uh, East Carolina, um, two weeks in a row with workhorse uh, type numbers. All right, uh, moving on to the second group. Uh, first up is uh, is a bit of a cheat code, if you will. It's uh, running back slash wide receiver Cam Thomas. Um, he's listed on the UTEP roster as a minor back, whatever that means. Um, but he is he's used in the passing game. He eats in the passing game. Um, He's averaging, he's getting you five to eight receptions a week, 70 to 90 yards through the air. So if you are in a PPR format, um, Cam Thomas is absolutely someone uh, that you need on your roster. He's only 9% owned. Uh, next is kind of a, I don't know, like crystal balling a little bit maybe, but um, Fluff Bothwell, who was our offensive uh, freshman of the week, South Alabama, he's only 8% owned. He's currently you know in a com- committee there at South Alabama. Uh, Alabama with Kentrell Bullock and Braylon McRiddles. He has not started a game yet, as we mentioned earlier, but he has led South Alabama in rushing every single week uh, for the running backs. And he's frankly looks like the best running back on the team. So, you know, we'll, we'll see if uh, he can kind of take it, they take that over if they, or if they continue uh, to rotate. But uh, Fluff Bothwell is someone that I added in a league uh, just this week, just because, you know, lots of potential. Um, and has looked really good in the snaps that he has gotten. Uh, running back Seth McGowan, New Mexico State, only 18% owned. Uh, he's getting you roughly 15 carries a week, 50 to, to, to 90 yards. Definitely looks like the best and most productive uh, running back for New Mexico State. And uh, next up, Cam Edwards, UConn, only 10% owned. Um, UConn was a, a, you know, a, a very heavy rotation with Cam Edwards, Victor Rosa, and Darrell Robinson. Uh, Victor Rosa is hurt, got to have finger surgery, going to be out for a while, um, did not play in, in week three. And Cam Edwards, man, was a workhorse for UConn against Duke. He had 21 carries for 106 yards and a touchdown versus Duke. Um, as I mentioned, Rosa's injured. Uh, Darrell Robinson's still there, but Cam Edwards kind of kind of looked like the man uh, there in week three uh, against Duke. And then, and then finally... Um, you know, not someone that's been super productive. Um, and so you have to be really, I think, kind of desperate to add him, but he is the lead back for UMass. He, he's involved in the passing game as well. And that's Jalen John, um, only 2% owned. But uh, running backs, running the running back get group gets really thin in fantasy football in general. And it's that's no exception among the G5. So, you know, if you're in a deeper league, Jalen John, John is someone you might be looking at uh, if you if you need some running back production. All right, uh, let's move back over to Luke and and the wide receivers. All right, we've got Dante Wright, uh, Temple, eight percent owned, averaging sixteen points per game. Uh, he is fourth in the G five in targets, twenty fifth in yards. Um, he's getting you ten targets and seven receptions. For 78 yards. Uh, I'm pretty excited about a lot of these wide receivers here that I'm going to talk about. Um, we've got, let's see here, I've got no particular order on here. We've got Cam Thomas, 9%, owned 15.1 points per game. He's 11th in the G5 in targets, 23rd in yards. He's getting you nine targets a game. Six of those are receptions for 73 yards. Um, we've got Ted Hurst, my offensive player of the week. He is 1% owned. 
on a buy this week. Then you have a game, then another buy, but he's getting you 16.4 points per game, seven targets, five receptions, 79 yards. He's got three touchdowns, which is second there in the G5. Um, let's see here. We've got looking through my notes. We've got Skylar Bell there at UConn. Uh, make that change there at quarterback. Well, you know, um, Nick Evers dealing with a head injury, so that is why he has been missing games. But Skylar Bell, seven targets. He's getting four receptions per game, but he's making those four count. He's averaging 101 yards. He's got 10.1 yak per reception, which would be the highest of the 2020 guys if he were there. Um, so tempered expectations, you know, he's doing a lot with a little, um, but we're looking for stuff. Skylar Bell, maybe a guy that could be out in your waiver wires so that could help you from week to week. You got Keyshawn Johnson, not that Keyshawn Johnson. You got a different one. Um, seven targets over there at Western Kentucky. Five of those are receptions for 89 yards doing work there for Western Kentucky, and we'll see what they look like this week. Um, got some more guys here. Um, next, we've got – hey, Brett, what's going on? So then we've got wide receiver, Dallin Cobb, 23% owned, looking good there for Georgia Southern. Not expecting a lot this week here against Old Miss, but he's getting six targets. Five of those are receptions for 58 yards, and he's got two touchdowns. So if you're getting 10.8 from the receiver, not too bad. I expect big things going forward there for Georgia Southern, and Cobb is looking pretty good as of late. A guy that I'm really excited about, I'm kind of curious if he's able to pull out a couple long catches here against Ohio State. Christian Fitzpatrick, he's 4% owned. He's averaging 16.5 points per game. He's fifth in the nation, or not fifth in the nation, fifth in the G5 in targets um, and 21st in the G5 in yards. He's getting 10 targets, but he's only able to haul in four of those, but he's averaging 83 yards per game. Pretty high A dot from what I remember, I think in the 15.2 range. So if he's able to catch a couple more of those, that could be um, a guy to pick up. Um, then we've got Junior Vandeross, 3% owned, 15.8 points per game. He is uh, getting you seven targets a game corralling four of those for 75 yards. Again, he's got three touchdowns. So he's, again, second that G5 in touchdowns. So good for him. And, again, Toledo, we have Tucker Gleason on there. He's got to throw the ball. Uh, he's been a a, uh, a target of his. And, again, scoring a lot. I think what I said earlier, like 17th in the nation in touchdowns scored. You've got Luke Floria there for Kent State. Not a lot to hang their hat on, but Luke Flory is one of those. He is getting seven targets. He is getting five receptions a game for 69 yards. And the last one, Anthony Smith. Guy, I mean, I thought it was going to be a different transfer the, that ECU would be counting on. But Anthony Smith, he's got a 16.1 average depth of target. He's only got 4.1 yards after catch per reception so he's kind of catching it going down he's a little i mean it's not great but he's getting five receptions on seven targets 93 yards and two touchdowns so again if ecu is putting up some points um again they've got a jake garcia who's throwing the ball danger, a lot of danger throws but uh going some of those going there to anthony smith a guy to keep your eyes on and that is my wide receivers that i wanted to highlight this week all 10 of them were digging in deep and there was a lot. I mean, other like Cobb was probably the fantasy point wise, one of the, the lower number totals, but we had a lot of 16 point guys just sitting out there on waivers available in 30% or more in leagues. Justice, what do we got for tight ends? All right. So uh, kind of rounding us out for the waiver wire this week, tight ends. Um, before I talk about these guys, I want to—I just want to mention there, there's there's three guys on um, our that we talked about in 2020. Did not repeat those guys here in terms of the graphics, but you know Tanner Cozio, 29% owned, seven and a half targets, 50 yards a game. Like, hopefully next week he, he's above that 30% uh, threshold. Dorian Fleming, only 11% owned, six targets, 48 yards a game, and then Colin Weber. 
3% owned, uh, 4.7 targets, 48 um, yards per game. And, and like Luke mentioned, um, even with that quarterback change, he was still targeted in week three. He was tied for the, the team lead in receptions with five uh, in week three for Charlotte. So, you know, Koziel, Dorian Fleming, Colin Weber, all those guys will take priority over over these next five guys I'm going to mention here. Uh, but first up, Bowden Grown, uh, Rice, 13% owned, averaging 4.7 targets per game, but only 21 yards. Unfortunately, that Rice offense is just not looking like we expected, um, but maybe that maybe they'll turn things around here soon. Uh, next up, Anthony Lanfear, uh, Memphis. Um, hadn't really done much at all um, the previous two weeks, but had a huge game for Memphis in week three against Florida State. He is only uh, 7% owned, um, and maybe that's a sign of things to come. Maybe he'll be more involved in the offense. Uh, I don't know, but, you know, tight ends uh, a virtual wasteland, and so something to kind of monitor. He had that big game uh, week three against Florida State. Um, kind of been a staple on this segment. Uh, Eli Wilson, Appalachian State, only 9% owned, and he's just kind of steady performer, right? He's going to get you five targets, three or four catches, and 40 yards a game. Nothing too flashy, um, but he's going to do it each and every week. Um, someone new to the list this week, uh, Anthony Torres from Toledo, only 5% owned. Um, the, the big thing to note here with Torres is he scored a touchdown in two or three weeks. And that, you know, that that's that's huge for tight end production. That's the difference from, you know, six points to 12 points a week. Um, and, and so when, a, when, you, when you see a double-digit score for a tight end, that's not named Harold Fannin Jr. or Rondé Gadsden or or some of the, the, the top guys. Um, it's usually because they scored a touchdown that week. And, and Tanner Coz, uh, sorry, Anthony Torres has done that in two or three weeks. And then uh, rounding us out here is Jacob Newell from Akron. Um, he's zero percent owned, um, but he's averaging you know kind of, kind of the same as as Bowden growing uh, four point seven targets and thirty three yards per game. Um, his targets have, have, have kind of jumped up the last couple of weeks uh, with six and seven targets. Uh, so maybe he, he's someone to monitor as we move into Mac play. And, and that's going to do it for our tight ends here for our week three waiver wire, honey. The mute button undefeated. Um, come back and join us next week as we discuss what happened in week four, as well as look forward to week five of the 2024 season. And as always, we bring you up to date on all the latest news and happenings in the world of the G5 college football. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like subscribe button. If you're watching us on X, please give us a retweet, a like, and a follow. And if you're listening to us on Apple podcasts or Spotify, please subscribe and leave those five star ratings and review. Thank you all for your support until the next time we are. The G55. Yeah, go, 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 go